All right, let's start with number 23. So when we first look at this, we see the x is in the exponent, and we want to get that exponent as alone as we can so we can solve for x there. So I've got to get rid of that 3. So I'm going to add a 3 to both sides. And then we get this 5 to the x plus 4 equals 21. Now the exponent is alone, and you have to get rid of the base of it. So to do that, I take the log, um, and it has to be log base 5, so that the log base 5 and the 5 cancels out. And then I have to take the log base 5 of 21. Then I end up with, I'm going to write over here, x plus 4 equals the log of base 5 of 21. And the last thing I need to do to get the x alone is to subtract the 4 from each side, so minus a 4. And then I just grab a calculator, and I look and see what x minus, I uh, plug in the log base 5, so you have to know how to change the base on the calculator. You can do that uh, math, alpha math, and it will give you a template for a different base for a log. So you do log base 5 of 21. Now here is a mistake that is easily made. I've, I've done this without noticing it. But when you hit the calculator, it says log base 5, and then it puts the left side of the parenthesis on there. So when you put 21, if you just put minus 4, then the calculator closes the parenthesis after the 4, and it's going to give you the wrong answer. So be sure that when you put it in the calculator, you have this um, log base base 5 of 21, and then close the parentheses, and then subtract the fourth, four, and then you'll get the right answer, which is negative 2.908. So that's a real common mistake that I've made a few times, so be careful with that. Number 24, so first thing we need to do, we have this exponent that's multiplied by a 13. I want to get rid of the 13. I'm going to divide both sides by the 13. 26 divided by 13 is 2. And then I get this e to the x minus 5. Now to get rid of the e, I'm going to take the natural log, because it's natural log base e. So the natural log base e and the e cancels out. And then over here I have to take the natural log of 2. So the natural log of 2 is equal to x minus 5. And to get the x alone, I'm going to add a 5 to both sides. So I have natural log of 2 plus 5. Grab a calculator and do natural log of 2. Close the parentheses and then add the 5 to it. And you should get x equals... 5.693. Number 25. So to get this x alone, the last thing that's happening to it is it has that natural log. So if I raise everything to the power of e, then the e and the natural log base e is going to cancel out. And you just get this 2x minus 4 equals e squared. Then I'm going to add a 4 to both sides. Add a 4 over here. Then I have this 2x. I'm going to do this in one step. So I divide by a 2. Now that whole thing, the e squared plus 4, is being divided by a 2. So you can either put that in parentheses when you put it in your calculator, or put in e squared plus 4, find the answer, and then divide the answer by 2. That way you're going to be sure to divide the whole thing. And you get 5.695. Number 26. This one actually could be done a couple different ways. The first thing you want to do is to get rid of that 6. I'm going to add a 6 to both sides. Now that 3 out in front... Um, we could divide by a 3 both sides. 
The, probably the most correct way to do it would be to change it to a power. So if I change this x plus 9 to a power of 3, and that is equal to the 6, it's on the other side. Now if I raise both sides to the power of 5, I'm going to get x plus 9 to the power of 3. equals 5 to the 6. Now there's a lot of powers going on here. So what we can do is we're going to get rid of those powers. I'm going to take the third root of each side and I end up with just x plus 9 equals 5 squared. 5 squared is just 25 and then I'm going to minus a 9 from both sides. So 25 minus 9 ends up to be 16 as your answer. If you plug that back in, 16 plus 9 is still a positive number, still a valid answer. Number 27, we have two logs, which is kind of a mess, so we want to combine those together. This is where the properties come in handy. We're going to condense them together, and because they are being added, now we're going to multiply the number. So we have log base 6 of x times the x minus 5. That's where the multiplication comes from. And that equals 2. Now to get rid of this log base 6, I raise it to a power of 6. And the 6 and the log 6 cancels out. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that. I have x squared minus 5x equals 36. This looks like a common problem that we've had in the past where we need to solve for x, but we have an x squared and an x, so I need to get them all on the same side. So I have this x squared minus 5x minus 36 equals 0. And then I ask myself, okay, what are factors of negative 36 that add to get a negative 5? So if you think about that for a minute, you come up with a negative 9 and a positive 4. So that means the factors are minus 9, x minus 9, and x plus 4. Then when we solve that for x, when we find the answers, we get x equals positive 9 and x equals negative 4. Now when we plug those back in, the 9 is going to be fine because you have 9 and 4 here. But when you put this negative in here, you're going to get a negative value right there. It's going to give you an extraneous solution. So negative 4 does not work. And so you just cross it out and the answer is x plus 9. All right, number 28. We have a log on both sides, which again, we could, um, we could, in the past, I've, I've kind of looked at this and thought, well, I want to get them on the same side, but I could also just raise them to the power of 3. Raise each side to the power of 3. Then the 3 and the log 3s cancel out, and you, just, and you end up with this um, 2x plus 3 equals 6x plus 4. Then solve it like you would a normal equation. So if I minus a 2x from both sides, I get 4x. And if I minus a 4 from both sides, I get this negative 1. And then I can see that if I divide by a 4, I get x equals negative 1 fourth. Now, um, because it's a negative, I especially want to check to see if this makes extraneous. But if I Add or put a negative one fourth into here, this would still be a positive number. It would be three minus a half. So that's still a positive number, so that was still fine. And then six, negative six fourths, negative three halves, plus four is still also positive. So this works, and that's your answer. Number 29. We are going to use this equation right here, Newton's law of cooling. And the first T is the temperature that you want. So you want it to reach 100 degrees, because at 100 degrees it's not going to burn your tongue. And then the initial one, so we, that's the 
the hottest that it was, so it was 212, and then we minus the temperature of the room, which was 72. We take that e to the negative r. That negative, um, be careful, because you know, sometimes I forget that that is a negative right there. So it's negative 0.046 uh, times t, and that's what we don't know. We don't know how long it's going to take, so that's going to be our unknown. And then we add 72 in to that last T of R. Then we're just going to solve for this. So the first thing we would look at is, um, I would probably just combine the numbers in the parentheses. So we have this 100 equals 140 E. Oh, and I would also minus the 72. So let's do that and then step over here. So if we minus the 72 from 100, we get 28 equals 140e to the negative 0.046t. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 140 to get the e alone. And 28 divided by 140 is 0.2. And then we have this E over here to the negative 0.046D. We're going to take the natural log of both sides to get rid of the E. So we have the natural log of 2, natural log of 0.2 equals negative point. Oh, that's a point zero four six t. Then if I divide by that negative point zero four six both sides, and then I just grab a calculator and divide that out, and the calculator helps me find the answer, which is natural log of point two. I'm going to find the answer and then. Divide that by the negative point of four six, and I get thirty four point nine eight. So approximately thirty five minutes. That's how long it will take your soup to cool down enough so that you won't burn your tongue. Last problem. So this one we're basically going to use our calculator to do all the work for us. So I'm going to try to describe this, even though you can't see my calculator. Um, first thing we're going to do is put uh, the values of the week, we're going to put that in for list one. So you hit the stat button, and we're going to edit, so we hit enter when it says edit. And then we're going to put these values in our, our calculator. So we just enter in one, three, five, seven, and nine. And then for list two, we're going to put the pair sold. So 5, 32, 48, 58, and 65. Now that we have our weeks in for list one and the pair sold in for list two, now we can use the calculator to give us that formula right there. And how we do that is we hit the stat button again. Only this time we want to calculate. So you arrow over until the calculator is highlighted. And then you go down until it says L-N-R-E-G. That's the, the regular formula for the natural log. So when that's highlighted, we hit enter. And it sh shows, oh, yep, you want the X list is list 1, the Y list is list 2. Yep, we're good on that. So you arrow down until it calculates it, and then it lists this formula right here, so you know you've got the right one. And then you just it tells you what A is. A is 3.95. So you write Y equals A, which is 3.95, plus B. B is 27. Point four eight, and you round it to two decimal places. Natural log of x, and there is our equation. On part b, we just use we plug in an x into our equation on there, 
and you find out that the answer 